pledge together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Thank you and be seated. Tonight is a very special night. And again, I want to thank you for all being here. I know that many of you may have um, school uh, students who are participating. Many of you are veterans and you have loved ones who are veterans. And we thank you so much for being here. At this time, I would, I would like to introduce to you uh, the co-chairperson of the organizing committee for the Veterans Muster, who will say a few opening remarks, Mr. Malcolm Jackson. Please make him welcome. Thank you, Dr. Moore, and welcome to this beautiful crowd. I, I can't see you up there in the, in the darkness, but I know we have a full house, and I'm so proud to see you tonight. This will be the first of two events for our Muster 4 that we call Muster 4 2013. I truly hope that, that this crowd will come out to the fairground on Saturday to join us as we continue with our tribute. This evening is, is sponsored by the Coweta Commission on Veterans Affairs and presented by approximately 300 Coweta County school, super, uh, school system students who represent five Coweta County schools. We extend a special thank you to all of you and especially to the, all the students, the directors and administrators, the parents, the grandparents, the friends, and of course the fine group of students that are here tonight. Each year, our commission sponsors a muster in honor of the veterans who served our country. The word muster is a military term actually used to describe the process by, whereby 
troops are assembled to hear about accomplishments and to say thank you for a job well done. In our case with the Veterans Commission, we use that term muster <clears throat> to make the public more aware of the sacrifices and the accomplishments of our local veterans, to say a special thank you to them for their service and to their families who inevitably stay behind to take care of business and raise families. The focus of Muster 4 will be to honor those brave men and women who served in the military during the Korean War along with their families who supported them. While we will cover the war more in detail on Saturday at the fairground, it's important, that I think, that I say a few words about the war itself here tonight in honor of these men and women who were so intimately involved. This front row we have designated in dedication to the memory of the three young men from Coweta County who were lost in that war. The names of those three young men is inscribed on the wall down at the Veterans Park here in Noonan. Their names are Corporal Connie Goosby, PFC William Crawford, and Private Robert Shavers. The next several rows in our audience are filled with Korean War veterans and their families and their friends, who, but these veterans who so valiantly served in the war to our, uh, in service of our great nation along with family and friends. So this program tonight is pre presented in your offer, oh, I'm sorry, in your honor, and we offer a heartfelt thank you for all of your services. I encourage you in the audience to seek out these veterans here tonight Extend your hand in some way and say thank you for your service. A few words about the war that we call Korea, the Forgotten War. On July 27, 2013, that was the 60th anniversary of the Korean Armistice Agreement, which ended the three-year-long Korean War, which lasted from June 1950 through July 1953. While the nation remembers throughout this year, here are five brief things that you should know about that conflict and that armistice. Number one, the truce took place two years during the years of 52 and 53 to negotiate. Even though hostilities continued, that time was spent negotiating how to deal with prisoners of war. Number two, the Korean War was the first involving the United Nations. Sixteen countries sent, 14, sent troops and 14 countries sent supplies, though the vast majority of both came from the United States. The entry of the U.S. into the war turned the tide and North, the North's forces were pushed back across the 38th parallel the temporary border that was set up between North and South Korea after World War II. However, the entry of the Chinese troops and Soviet military aid forced the conflict into a stalemate. Approximately 36,000 U.S. soldiers were killed during the Korean War. About 103,000 were injured but at the same time, North Korea suffered millions of casualties, including about one million dead on each side for North and South Korea. Almost 8,000 U.S. troops are still officially missing in action from that war. Number three, the armistice created what is called the DMZ or the Demilitarized Zone. The DMZ is actually kind of a buffer between North and South Korea. It spans 1.2 miles in each direction, North and South, of that armistice line and is not technically a part of either country. Number four, the war was the first to feature battles between jet fighters. Both sides fielded jet fighters in combat. 
with the UN forces using F-86s and the communists deploying MiG-15s. The U.S. and its allies unquestionably won that battle for the air with U.S. forces downing over 500 MiGs at a loss of less than 80 of their own jets. And number five, the armistice is not really a peace treaty. Though the armistice agreement ended the hostilities, the war never technically ended. To this day, the U.S. and South Korea are still legally at war with North Korea and the U.S. maintains a peacekeeping force in South Korea yet today. Tensions between the North and South continue to this day. So why is the Korean War called the Forgotten War? It was actually a war sandwiched between World War II and the Vietnam War. It was called a police action and never, never formally recognized as a war. With the rise of communism, it was a very bloody war in a confusing time that many actually have preferred to forget. However, in the minds of many of us and in the minds of those who served in any capacity in the military around the world during that era, and most especially to our Korean veterans who served during that era, it was a war, a war that should never be forgotten. Now, with those facts in mind, I encourage you to sit back and hear this evening's student tribute to those brave souls by some of Coweta County's finest students and appreciate their efforts on our behalf. So on behalf of the Coweta Commission on Veterans Affairs, thanks to each of you students here tonight to perform this tribute. I know you've worked hard. I've heard you practicing even this afternoon. So please know that your efforts are truly appreciated. So now, students, on with the show.
The group that just performed is the Noonan High School Symphonic Winds under the direction of Mr. John Eldewan and Mr. Josh Roberts. Um, the a group that's about to perform is the Cannon Gate Elementary Chorus. And I will just tell you, as a, as a former music teacher in this county, I taught music in the county for 22 years before going into administration, I will tell you, it is very, very early to be play, playing or singing in front, of, in front of people, especially if they're not just your parents, because uh, it, it, it takes a while to get to sound the way these folks are already sounding. I'm very, very proud of them and, um, and the, the job that they're doing. But uh, we want to thank um, the Cannon Gate Elementary Chorus for their participation tonight, Ms. Andrea Chitwood and their principal, Dr. Julie Lutz. Please give them a hand.
Thank you, Ms. Chewood. Let's give uh, the Cannon Gate Chorus another big round of applause for that performance. Tremendous job, tremendous job. Um, we are, in the, for the sake of uh, trying to keep our program moving along, we are going to have a little bit of movement, possibly while others are performing or, or we're talking, and that's okay. Uh, we're trying to eliminate as much downtime as we can. Coming back onto our stage is our Noonan High School Chorale. Um, they're, they're performing, He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. And tonight you will hear some patriotic music. You will hear some other music, um, as the band performed earlier, that's not necessarily patriotic, but certainly um, inspires us towards patriotism and, and the, the uh, ideals of brotherhood and country. Um, so they will be performing this, um, um, this pop tune uh, in just a moment. And their conductor is Miss Caroline Thompson. She is the Newton High School Chorus Executive Officer. And I would like to mention that the principal of Newton High School is Mr. Chase Puckett. The Newton High School Corral.
of a shift here for the uh, high school chorus folks to get off. Again, um, what a great job. And that was uh, Mr. Josh Robert, Associate Director of Bands um, with Noonan High School with the Combined Choir and Band. Let's give him another round of applause, please.
On stage left, we have our uh, next group to perform. That's the Elm Street Elementary Chorus. Their director is Mr. Josh Tate, and their principal is Dr. Christy Hildebrand. I want to thank them for being here. Let's give them a round of applause.
We want to thank Mr. Tate. Uh, Mr. Tate, former member of the Newton High School Band. Um, and they wanted to demonstrate some of that, but it's, it takes up a little more space than we were able to give them. So they do have a, a solo member uh, who will be coming out to perform a rifle demonstration from the East Coweta High School Marine Corps Junior ROTC. Please welcome Dakota Pickford. What a tremendous job. Big hand for Dakota Pickford, East Coweta Marine Corps Junior ROTC. <laughs> Newton High School uh, Drama Department will be presenting um, the program 1776 for their fall musical and one-act play production. We would like to uh, invite them to the stage now for a uh, selection from Mama Looks Sharp. Mama Luke Sharp, excuse me. Mr. Bob Ramsour is their director. And this scene from the musical 1776, General Washington's Courier has delivered a message from the front just as the members of the Continental Congress have walked out, unable to compromise over the issue of independence. Wants another rum, General? General? Lord, I ain't even a corporal. Yeah, well, what's the army now? Sit down, gentlemen. The chair rules it's too hot to work. What's it like out there, General? You probably know more than me. Sitting in here? Sweet Jesus. This is the last place to find out what's going on. You don't see Congress rushing off to get killed, do you? But they sure are great ones for sending others. I'll tell you that. Who sits here? Caesar Rodney of Delaware. Where are you from, General? Watertown. Where's that? Massachusetts. Well then, you belong down there. But be careful. There's something about John Adams' chair that makes a man awful noisy. You seen any fighting? Sure did. I seen my two best friends get shot dead on the very same day. Right on the village green it was, too. When they didn't show up for supper, the mamas went down the hill looking for them. Ms. Lowell, she found Timothy right off. And Ms. Pickett, 
She looked near half the night for Willem because he'd gone and crawled off the green before he died. Mama, hey mama, come looking for me. I'm here in the meadow by the red maple tree. Mama, hey mama, look sharp, here I be. Did we run? But then we turned round and the battle begun. Then I went under. Oh, Ma, am I done? Hey, hey, Mama, look sharp. My eyes are wide open, my face to the sky. Is that you I'm hearing in the tall grass nearby? Mama, come find me before I do die. Hey. Hey, Mama, look sharp. I'll close your eyes, my Billy, them eyes that cannot see. And I'll bury up, my Billy, beneath the maple tree. And never again will ya whisper to me. Hey, hey, oh, Mama, look sharp. Seventeen seventy six opens Saturday night at the Newton High School Auditorium. It, it will run Saturday night and uh, Monday night and Tuesday night. Tickets are available in the lobby if you'd like to buy a ticket. If you'd like to attend that, uh, it's always a great program in the fall. Let's give them another big round of applause. We have, a, we have a piece that's not listed on our program, but it's always a special part of our veterans program every year. It's the Armed Forces Salute. Um, Mr. Eldewan is going to, wait, Mr. Eldewan? <laughs> Mr. Roberts, excuse me, is going to conduct the uh, Newton High School uh, Symphonic Band with the uh, Armed Forces Salert, Salute. And what we would like to ask you to do is if you're here and you served in a branch of the military, when you hear your service song, we'd invite you to stand. If you're here uh, and you'd like to stand in memory or in honor of someone who is serving or did serve, we invite you to do that well, as well. Mr. Roberts and the Newton High School Symphonic Band Armed Forces Salute. States Army, please stand. 
United States Coast Guard, please stand. States Marine Corps, please stand. Navy, please stand. Thank you so much for your service, veterans, and, serv and current servicemen. We invite back to the podium now uh, Mr. Malcolm Jackson. As he mentioned earlier, we had, uh, uh, in conjunction with tonight's program, an essay contest, and he is going to uh, announce the recipients of those awards at this time. I need to, I want to ask uh, the following people to join me on the stage, if you will. Uh, Dr. Walter Todd, Alex Erdonado, Jared Ornick, 
Austin Bernston, and Austin Williams. If you're, in, if you're here, please join me on the stage. While they're coming, uh, you know, uh, I am so proud of these uh, East Coweta uh, Marine Corps JROTC students. They get, did such a great job tonight in welcoming our crowd and getting our guests seated. Uh, they, I just can't say enough good things about them. I, I served some time in the military, but I was never that spit and polished. I'm proud of you guys. <laughs> I, I also would be remiss if I did not uh, give a special thanks to my co-chair, Major General Joe Brooks, sitting right here in the front, along with our commission <laughs> committee. A couple of other things. Uh, uh, it's always an honor when we go to the veterans programs and we hear this song that we just heard this rendition and see all of these veterans stand. And I'm so proud of you and so proud of the service that you gave to our country. Uh, two more things. Uh, in, in the uh, control booth, we have the CEC uh, video department. Uh, who's, who are filming this tonight, and I'm sure if you have a new link, you'll be seeing it again on stage. So I better button my coat here. Uh, we'll also, we also have uh, the Newnan High School uh, History Club uh, filming this tonight. They just formed, uh, I'm told they just formed this history club this past year. They have 190 students, and one of their projects is the filming of this event tonight. So we're proud of you guys. One of the things that we added this year, something new to our activities, was a essay contest. Uh, we began this test, des uh, contest designed to involve, involve all of the high schools in the county. We asked that each individual high school history department have their students do a short essay on the theme of the muster. In this case, of course, Korea the Forgotten War. We allowed each school the leeway to allow their students to submit either a written uh, essay or a video, and we, we received both. So in turn, those schools judged their own essays at the school and submitted a winner to each of us, to us for each school for a video and for a written essay. We then submitted the winners to an independent judge who, and this judging was done by a longtime friend of mine and a longtime exhibitor of the Newnan High School Department Vet Connect program that happens twice a year at the Armory at Newnan High School. He is also a frequent lecturer in uh, Mr. Steve Quesenberry's history department, and I know a lot of you are familiar with that. So our judge is here tonight. Where are you, judge? There you are. Uh, but before I announce the awards, I would like to ask that he say a few words about his judging process and about the quality of the essays that he did. Dr. Walter Todd is a professor of history and phys ed. He is retired from the University of West Georgia and now with Shorter College. So Dr. Walter Todd. Well, thank you all. Um, just want to say the um, essays were very varied, uh, very different. Each one had merit in its own account. Uh, but uh, they, there was a, a definite uh, character of each of the essays. Uh, and the um, thing that I was struck by, mainly by the essays, was the fact that uh, the students spoke of the war as, uh, and again, this was the, the theme of this, was the Forgotten War. And by reading these essays, you could tell that it may be forgotten to a lot of Americans, but it wasn't forgotten by these students that wrote and did the uh, video. The essays that uh, you could see in their, in their essays and their writing, 
the uh, importance that the war had to them and has had to their community. So I'll just say that, you know, the essays were good, the essays were different, uh, but you, ex you hoped they would be and it wouldn't be the same. And each one had merit uh, of its own. I'll say something very, very briefly. Uh, Jared um, talks about the heroes of the war and uh, he talks about the heroes come in all sizes and shapes and some in different species. Uh, and, but all of them served admirably and with, uh, deserve our respect and our, our, our uh, honor whenever you think about a Korean War vet. And uh, I had an uncle that was a Korean War vet and didn't know about it until about five years ago. He's passed away two years ago. But, you know, listening to him tell the stories that he said he would not, don't tell this to your father. He'd tell me things like that all the time. And, and that just made me more interested in what happened to him in the war and then reading about the Korean War some more. Um, Austin's paper was um, very um, uh, poignant, talks about why is the war so forgettable, uh, and talks about the fact that it became between two great American wars, the Second World War and the Vietnam War. And that because of this and the fact that it was a shorter war, many Americans don't pay much attention to it. But the results of the Korean War, we hear about them daily. If you listen to any national news, you hear constantly about North Korea doing something else, uh, the hatred they have for the South Koreans, and then the hatred that they have for the United States. And um, because of this, uh, the war is not over especially to the North Koreans. And uh, this is one of the few wars that ended, but technically did not end because it's an armistice. It wasn't a signed peace treaty. And it stays that way today. Um, the other one is uh, the, by Alex, uh, the Forgotten War. Again, uh, talks about its results uh, are mainly uh, between um, the North and South, uh, in that you have two similar countries in people and uh, character and culture, but you look at those two countries today and you can see the complete difference between an American system of democracy and a communist system of brutal government ruling. Uh, the South is one of the most prosperous countries in the world today. Uh, you know, they're coming along, uh, they have uh, a great economy, and um, just looking around, especially at the number of Kias and Hondas that are on the highway, you can see that the, they're starting to have some effect in the American ec economic system too. Uh, and then finally we come to the video. Uh, the video is, I thought, a very great piece of work. Again, it's only about five minutes long but it deserves your attention and should be looked at as a story of one man's war and how it affected him and the choices that he made during that war to get home. Thank you. Now each, each of these four contestants will be given a certificate of appreciation by our Veterans Commission along with a check for their efforts. Three of the winners submitted a written essay and one submitted a video. So the winners are, uh, two get very special recognition as the runners up, a junior representing Newnan High School in the essay division titled The Forgotten War, Alex Adonado. A freshman representing Northgate High School in the SA division entitled Heroes of the Forgotten War, Jared Onick. The second place winner, a senior representing East Coweta High School in the SA division titled America the Beautiful, Austin Bernson. And our first place winner, a senior representing Noonan High School in the video division with a video 
interview entitled The 25th Tropical Lightning Division, Austin Williams. Incidentally, uh, his, his interview was with First Sergeant Charles Williams, and is, is Sergeant Williams in the audience tonight? Charles, Charles Williams? Charles, Sergeant Williams is with us here tonight, and he will be uh, participating with... Kennedy. Charles Kennedy, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, he will be actually be uh, one of our honored Korean War veteran guests in the audience uh, on Saturday to receive an award for one of the KIA families that cannot attend. Uh, each of these uh, essays will be posted on our website, uh, Kawita Kova, for your viewing, as well as on Facebook. And uh, I hope you will go there and take a look at those. Uh, videos for with us. So I offer a very special thank you for the Coyote County School System, the history teachers, and each of the students who participated in this process. I trust that it was a worthwhile experience and each of us gained a little better appreciation of the sacrifices of our Korean War veterans. And I look forward to seeing every one of you out at the fairground on Saturday. So thank you very much for coming. At the rear of the stage, behind the band, we have the Smoky Road Middle School Chorus. Uh, their director, Ms. Denise Meacham. Their principal is Mr. Jose Casablanca. We want to welcome Smoky Road Middle School Chorus.
You know, a lot of times we turn on the TV or listen to the radio and the news isn't very good. Tonight, I think the news is pretty good, don't you? We've heard tonight, we've, hung, we've heard young people in elementary, middle, and high school performing about patriotism, about brotherhood, about country. We've had young men and women in dress military uniforms. And we learned that even in 70, 1776, the people wondered if Congress knew what they were doing. <laughs> I'm not going there, that's a little too easy. But, uh, but we want to thank you so much for being here. Um, my name is Doug Moore. I'm Director of Operations and Safety for the County School System. And um, it's, it's certainly been a privilege for me to be a part of this program tonight. And, and I want to thank, on behalf of Superintendent Dr. Steve Barker, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank uh, you, you veterans and, and, and service folks who are here tonight that, that we have recognized. And I hope that you've been lifted up and encouraged and know that this group in here appreciates what you have done for us. Tonight, we are going to close our program with a grand finale, uh, followed by the retiring of our colors from sea to shining sea with all of the choruses and uh, the band combined, with Mr. Eldewan conducting.
you all. Please recognize the Cannon Gate Elementary School Chorus. The Elm Street Elementary School Chorus. The Smoky Road Middle School Chorus. The cast of the production 1776. They are all on stage. The Marine Corps Junior ROTC. Dakota Pickford. And the Newton High School Symphonic Band. And the Newton High School Chorale. We thank you all so much for being here tonight. Please remain standing as the detail retires the colors. Thank you so much for being here. Good night. Drive, drive carefully.